Welcome to the Sasslon piece, the setting for one of the classic men's downhill ski races. You can see the start gate being prepared just to the left of the screen here, because we're in the Val Gardena just a few days before the race here in the heart of the Italian Dolomites. We're going to ski with Louise all the way down this famous course and we'll show you some of the highlights en route. The course starts just below the top of the Champenois lift at 2,249 metres and is three and a half kilometres long. And here you can see the start gate for the Super G. So if you're free skiing, you're likely to follow the line that Louise is taking here. It can be a little bit mogled, can be a little bit scraped in between the moats, so just take a little bit of care. And then you're going to turn left. Have you skied the Sass Long? If so, tell us in the comments below. The race gears at this point are now more or less at their full speed and there is a huge compression just coming up to the right hand side of these, uh, this fence just here. If you hit this at speed just here, it really does hit your thigh muscles. So now we've got about a 500 meter shush and this is really a critical part of the race. The ability to tuck and hold the tuck low here will really make a massive difference to the time uh, that the races achieve and the races are often won or lost at this point. The Schiller Peaks in the far distance on the top of Alpe di Susi. Do subscribe to the Inspired Italy channel for more skiing and cycling videos. There are six official jumps on the course. But when you ski it later on in the season, most of the jumps will have been removed or at least reduced in severity. Coming up to the Sockers jump on the right hand side. And it really is just a preparation for what we call the Sockers Wall, Sockers Hotel just off to the right hand side here. So looking for the flag, the orange flag on the left hand side of the piece there is the top of the soccer's wall and this for you free skiing is really the steepest part of the entire course but this is a critical part of the race course and we'll show you why Louise putting in a few more turns to control her speed. So from a race perspective, you're going to throw yourself off the bottom of the soccer's wall onto this piece, which is more or less flat, as you can see, but is the fastest part of the course. And here the skiers are getting up to about 130 odd kph. So we get back into a little bit of gradient. And these two flags here mark the point of the most famous feature of the Sasslon, the camel's hunt. Wham, off we go. It's the only camel in the world with three humps. And uh, prior to early 80s, then skiers used to pre-jump the first jump, land, jump the second and land on the bottom of the third. Now the skiers take the whole thing in one leap, which results in a flight of around about 60 to 80 meters. The VIP area for the race is just on the right hand side there, you can buy a ticket, all day ticket. A fantastic place to watch the race at the bottom of the camel fence. Another jump just here on the left hand side. As I say, I think there are six jumps altogether officially on the race course, but that jump for argument's sake, when you're free skiing, you'd hardly notice it was there. So we're about two thirds of the way down. And we're getting into a steeper section now and a more technical section as well. So we're coming up to a section where there are four uh, curves, at least on the course. Uh, there are four tight curves, which are critical again to the performance. 
and your finish time into a slight gully with a left hander followed by the right hander. Now a few years ago we skied this with Konrad Bartelski, Britain's most successful downhill skier. He, he skied around about the early 80s if you've not heard of him. And his most successful race was here on the Sasslong in 1981, December 13th, 1981. Skiing this with him, he gave us a commentary all the way down. And the really important thing is, at this point in the race, he was winning. He was in the lead. And as we, Louise comes around this right-hander, you can see the finish line just at the bottom there. He was winning the race. I mean, he was beating Klammer and Poborski and people like this. If you're skiing this, be a little bit careful as you come around that right-hander for the simple reason that this can be uh, skied out a little bit, particularly towards the end of the day. So you might find quite a few moguls uh, around the place. The two flags here on the right-hand side depict the last jump on the course and Bartelski in his race took the jump perfectly. But as he landed it, he sat back on his skis. You can see the two lines look, this is the finish line. By the time he got here, he'd lost by 11 hundredths of a second. 11 hundredths of a second. There you go, that's the Sasslong. What a wonderful beast. Enjoy its classified black red. <laughs> steady away. <laughs> steady away, well done, sweetie. <laughs> great was, run. It was steady. <laughs> no, it was great. How was it? <laughs> good, good. It was good. It was good. <laughs> great stuff. Great fun. Inspired Italy ski leaders, you can't beat them. <laughs> Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it.